Hi guys, Mr. Ruffwaffles here. This is going to be a guide for you to do the Revelations Easter Egg. No nonsense, super clear, let's do this. First things first, you need to shoot the graves in the spawn area of the map in the order that the characters died. So that's going to be Richterfen, Dempsey, Takio, Nikolai, or if you want to do it by numbers reading left to right, then it's going to be 2, 3, 1, Four. When you shoot that fourth grave, you shoot Nikolai's grave, what will happen is you'll hear some thunder and some fire should appear in front of the graves. It will then fade away, it will only be there for about a second, and then you're onto the next step. This is step two. You now need to build the Keeper Protector, so go around the map. If you need all the part locations, I have a guide for that in the description down below, and there will be a card in the top right-hand corner of the screen right now that you can click if you want to go through to that, but build the Keeper Protector, and then while you're going around the map, you're going to want to take a good look at the back of each of the jump pads. So on one of the jump pads, what you're looking for and what you will see is there'll be a small triangular rock protruding from the back of the pad. It should look like this, just a small small triangular rock at the back of the pad in the floor, so it's embedded in the floor and it's going to rise up out of the ground once you've done the graves, so find where that is, and what you're going to want to do is call in the Keeper Protector, okay, find the jump pad that has this triangular rock on it, and then go and stand on the rock. Now, obviously that means that you're going to jump away from the location, but then just jump back again, and while the jump pad is cooling down, if you stand on the rock, the keeper should start a little ritual. I think it's pretty much essential that at this point you get all the generators on, because those generators are going to allow you to basically get a load of points to open up the map, get yourself some better weapons, things like that, so I really recommend you do that first, because once the keeper starts its ritual, you need to defend it for like three minutes or so, so you might end up going through like two, maybe three rounds, depending on where in the game you are, but you need to defend the keeper while it's doing the little wiggly wiggly, and once it's done, it will disappear and a film reel will fly into the air and land on the ground where the keeper was standing. Now, I want to quickly point out right now that if any of these steps are giving you trouble or you're having any difficulty, maybe you're stuck, go down to the description of the video and there'll be a load of bonus tips and clarifications of things so that if you get at all stuck in any capacity, you read the description and you will be fine, okay? Also, if the Keeper doesn't start his ritual as you want him to, then just jump back over to the destination of the jump pad that you're standing on, and then go back again, and once you get back again, just go and stand on the rock. The Keeper should sort of come towards you and start the ritual. Once again, though, if it still isn't doing it, just kind of jiggle yourself in place. It can be a little finicky to get it in the right spot sometimes, but most of the time, if you jump and then jump back to where the rock is, so you're going to want to be actually standing on the rock itself when you're trying to get the keeper in position, then you should be all good. As soon as the keeper starts dancing, by the way, you can leave the rock, you can go away from the rock, and just let the keeper do its thing while you defend it. Pick up the reel that the keeper drops and go to Nacht der Untoten. Then, in the upstairs area, you should see a small metal box that you can go over to, hold square on, and a radio will begin to play. I've got the full audio of the radio on my channel if you want to watch it. Once again, top right hand corner of the video, there'll be a link to that so you can go and have a listen. We're going to just go through with the steps though now. You're going to want, throughout your game, to be hitting the mystery box for the Mara Stagua, okay, and also the Arnies. They're the two things that you definitely 100% are going to need for this easter egg. They are essential, so make sure you're maybe running Immolation Liquidation, that would be very useful. Spin that box, and at some point, you'll get the Lil Arnies. They are the monkey bombs of this map. What you need to do is get them out of the box, and then once you have them, come into the Apothecon. So to get in there, you obviously need to open the Pack-a-Punch as you normally would by doing the four generators and then trapping the beast itself. Go inside, and what you'll notice is that around the edges of the room, there are nine spawn locations that are small holes low down on the floor. They're sort of floor joined to wall, and there are nine of them. What you need to do is go around and you're going to basically throw your Arnies in three successive holes. So the way I do this is I number the room as follows. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. This is eight and this is 9. The way I always do this is I go over to the hole that is number 1 in the little list that I read out, I go over to it, I throw an Arnie in, 
you should hear a sound, and then you know that you've done that one correctly. Go over to the next hole, so number two, throw it in. You should hear a sound, and then once again, go to your third hole, throw the Arnie in, you'll hear the and you'll also hear the sound of some Marguars spawning in. You're going to want to kill the Marguars. Hopefully, those three Margs that spawn in will give you a max ammo. If not, you need to get one yourself by other means in your game. But get a max, get more Arnies, and then it's time for you to do three more holes. You're going to need to do all nine holes in total, so keep a good track of which ones you've done. This is why I order them. I go one, two, three, I get those all done. Then I go four, five, six, I get those all done. Then I go seven, eight, nine, and get those all done. Now, if you mess up in any way, for example, if you throw one in a hole, then the next one you miss, and then the next one you throw in a hole, and then you're out of Arnie's and you can't get that next hole, then don't worry. What I recommend you do is just come back later once you have a new set of Arnie's and do those three holes again. Because if you fail it, then it's going to mess things up and you're going to need to basically reset things. And so you might have successfully done one, two, three and got those marks. But for four, five, six, if you go four, five and then you fail six, just come back again later and try four, five, six once more. Once this is done, if you come to the bridge area inside the Apothecon, there'll be an audio reel lying on one of these yellow bulbs for you to pick up. And that reel is going to come to Kino Der Toten. Once again, this particular reel is already on my channel, so in the top right hand corner of the screen, if you want to go listen to the audio reel with subtitles, then click through to that link, it's in the description as well, and you can go and have a listen to the storyline information. For now though, I'm just going to show you where you place it, we're then going to be moving on to the final reel, and this one requires you to build a skeleton, okay? So what we need for this is an upgraded gun, so for example, if you just get like a, I don't know, like a man of war out of the box, maybe get the tommy, I reckon I recommend you do the chalk easter egg for this by the way guys, I think that it is an extremely good idea to do the chalk easter egg in your game just because the Tommy is pretty great to be honest and it's good to have all things done before you start going through the steps. So I recommend you do the chalk easter egg, grab yourself a Tommy if you like or just use a random gun out of the box, as long as it is pack a punched you will be able to start doing this step. You're also going to need the upgraded Ma Astagua, or the upgraded Apothecon Servant, sorry. So what that requires you to do is upgrade it via its normal process of shooting the five blue rocks in the sky. Once again, guides for this all over YouTube, so link in the top right hand corner of the video right now. Click on it and you can get a guide for the upgraded Apothecon Servant. Once you've upgraded it and you've got an upgraded normal weapon, you're going to need to come to a varied series of locations around the map, which will all feature a small slab of rock, which you are going to shoot with your upgraded gun. Not with your Apothecon Servant just yet, your upgraded weapon. So the first one I'll be showing you is here in the spawn. I recommend you come to the furthest right you possibly can, look into the church, and there is a yellow light and then sort of a shadow above it. You're going to be shooting that with your upgraded gun. So just shoot it with your KN or your Man of War or whatever, and what should happen is you should hear a sort of clunk sound and the rock itself that you just shot will turn into a bone. The bone will float a little into the air and you're then going to pull out your Apothecon Servant, shoot towards the bone, and you should hear this noise letting you know that the bone has been sucked up. If you don't hear that noise, then maybe you need to check your sound settings or maybe you didn't actually get it and you need to make sure that you've actually shot the rock and got the bone to float up so it can be sucked up with the upgraded Apothecon Servant. Next location I'm going to show you, and by the way, these can be done in any order, these bones, but next location I'm going to be showing you is in Shang, right above the Stamina Up machine. If you go to Stamina Up and then you look above it, there's a small bluish triangular rock just sort of sticking out from the actual outcrop. Shoot it, it will turn into a skull, and then once again, you're going to be sucking it up with the Apothecon Servant. Good job so far, that's two down. Next, we're going to be going to Origins. So in Origins, it's this area here, the kind of flat area where Speed Cola used to be back in the day. Come over to this spot and you're going to look towards the sort of horizon, I suppose. Look down and there's a rock just down there on the slope that you can shoot and it will turn once again into a bone. Shoot it with a servant. You know the drill at this point. Sorted. Next bone. Really rather tricky one, this. It's in the DE wall run and what you're going to want to do is not shoot the first wall, not the second wall, but the third wall you run on, which is going to be the curved one, is going to have the rock that you need to shoot on the very edge facing the direction that you run for the wall run to go towards the perk. So that's going to be as you're going along the wall for the first time as you land on it, it's in front of you on the bottom right hand corner. 
It's pretty difficult to spot, so what I recommend you do is just spray into the wall there, around the edge, around the bottom right-hand corner, and you should get it. If you don't, if you're worried about this or you're having trouble, use an upgraded ray gun, and you'll get it pretty much first time, because that bad boy has splash damage, which is going to make your life a lot easier. So, you should be good if you spray into that corner of the wall. It should pop out, you should see it, just float in there. And then once again, upgraded Apothecon Servant. Make sure you're in the right place when you're shooting it. Go onto the wall itself and give it a shot, and you should hear it get sucked up once more. Next one is going to be in Nacht. Come to the upstairs area of Nacht. If you're facing Jug, then do a 180, turn around, and you're going to be shooting this slab that is up here. That's going to turn into a bone. Shoot it with a Servant. Done. Next up, one in Verukt. Come to Verukt, there's the fountain area. You're going to look to the right of that and there'll be a waterfall. If you're looking at the waterfall, there is a blue sort of slate outcrop there and on that blue slate outcrop, there will be a rectangular slab and that's the slab that we're going to be shooting for this egg. Shoot it, it'll turn into a bone, it'll float into the air, shoot it with a servant and then Bob's your uncle, you've sucked the bone up. At this point, you should have six bones. If you've got all six bones, that's Shang, D-E, Verukt, Origins, Nacht, and spawn, then you should return to Nachtaran Toten, and what you'll see is all of those bones are piled up on the second floor just near the Juggernaut machine. Shoot them with the Apothecon Servant, once again upgraded, and it will suck the bones into the portal, and then you'll see a zombie corpse spawn. It'll be wearing a kind of purpley dress, and it turns out that this is Sophia crazy stuff. So, you're going to want to once again shoot your Apothecon Servant, and what will happen is Sophia will kind of disappear, you'll hear a scream, and you should see the reel fly into the air and land on the floor. That's the third audio reel. This one is going to Origins, so make your way over to the top of the mound in Origins. Go listen to the reel, and once again, it's on my channel, guys. Link is in the description down below, and you can go and listen to that bad boy with subtitles. Good stuff. So, that means we now have all three audio reels. While you activate this reel and listen to it in your game, what will happen is Sophia, as a ghost, will fly across the sky and end up just by Jug in Nacht. At this point, it's time to use the corruption turrets, the four turrets around the map that you have activated, I hope, at this point, using those conversion generators. And what you're going to be doing with them is shooting the shiny blue rocks in the sky, floating in each area. So, for example, you come to spawn, there's a shiny blue rock in the sky, you shoot it with the turret, what will happen is it will kick you off the turret, it will lock in place the laser that is then firing at Sophia automatically, it will bounce off and automatically aim at Sophia, and then you just go through the other locations around the map and each time shoot the blue rock and it should lock on. And once you have all four, go back to Nachtaran Toten and hold square on Sophia. She will turn into a metallic sphere as she was in Gorod Krovi when she flew off to complete the Ascension Protocol. She will then glide through the map and she will land atop the teleporter in Kino de Toten. Once she's in there, you need your whole team to stand inside the teleporter and you will teleport to Samantha's room which is pretty damn crazy. So, once you're in Sam's room, go over to the bed, wait a second for your actual models to load in and textures to load in, because it's a little slow on PS4 with Black Ops 3, but if you give it a moment, what you should see is a book lying on the bed. You're going to want to hold square. That book is the Cronorium, and you're going to be bringing it back to Kino Der Toten with you to use for the rest of the Easter egg. Once you've got it, you've gone back to Kino, you've got that book, go over to the podium, okay, the podium that is in Kino on the stage and hold square. You should see a load of souls fly out of the book, they're going to go towards the projector room, there's going to be a glowing light in the projector room, it's going to be fantastic, and you should then get a sigil, that's a big purple symbol, spawning on the floor in there. This is going to be the marker that you need to clarify that you are 100% now at the gateworm step, okay? But I just quickly want to say, if you fail, if you don't pick up the book, if you're too distracted by the other stuff in that room, don't worry, all you gotta do is go another round, you can all go in the teleporter again, you can teleport, and then you can grab the book. Then you just put it on the podium, you get the souls to come out, and you're fine and dandy, you're all caught up. 
Once again though, if you do get stuck, more help is going to be in the description of this video. So at this point, your job is going to be to find the orange eggs around the map. Now, the spawns of these eggs change every game. There are a couple of them that are very easy to spot. So for example, in Verrucht, if you're just sort of looking forwards towards the conversion generator from the portal towards Verrucht, then you should see it on the left, just on the floor by the foliage. There's one by the Zetsubo no Shima tubes. There's one in the premise room by Dempsey's feet. There's one in Shang around the sort of edge outside of the Shang area. There's one in the Shang fire. There's one in DE as well by the Wonderfizz machine. There's another one in Kino on the right side of the room if you're facing the stage. If you're on the elevated area, you have to run and jump and it's in the seats up there. There's another spawn in the spawn. It's in a barrel or on a barrel rather on a piece of cloth just down one of these sort of alleyways of the spawn. There's a spawn in the origins area. Area. If you're in the area where Speed Cola used to be in the original Origins and you look to your left, it's going to be just up there by where the fire is against the stone wall. There's a bunch of spawns for these things, guys. And the best thing for you to do, because I can't give you absolutely all the spawns because there are loads of them, is to basically go around your game and have everybody hunt. As soon as you find an egg, an orange egg, pick it up and then go into the Apothecon and you should be able to plop it down in one of the four pedestals that are around the gas pool in the middle of the room. Once it goes in, if you give it a moment, it should start glowing yellow. It will go inside that big bulb and once that happens, the person that put it in needs to kill zombies around the bulb and souls should fly towards it. You're filling a soul box here. 10 souls per egg and that should complete it and once that happens you'll get a gateworm rising out of that podium that you just put it in inside the apothecon you can grab yourself a gateworm and then it's time to go find yourself a rune of creation now in co-op everyone can be doing this and trying to get them all at once or in solo you're going to want to be doing it one at a time because you can only carry one egg at once of course but regardless once you've got your gateworm your job is going to be to walk around the map and at some point you should hear a ray Radar ping, okay? It's gonna go ding, ding, and then as you get closer to the location you need to get to, it's gonna go ding, 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 but your gateworm should appear in the air, it will then fade away, and in its place, you will receive a rune, okay? It will be a purple apothecon word, so for example, it might be Maroth, which is shadow. Hold square on it, and you will get a rune of creation in your inventory. This needs to be done four times, because there are four eggs, and there are four runes of creation. So, go around the map looking for an egg, get an egg, go in the Apothecon, and by the way, I'll put as many spawn locations for the eggs as I know in the description of this video. So, I am packing this thing full of information for you guys because I want this to be as useful a guide as I possibly can give you in as short a time as I can possibly give you because we only solved this damn easter egg today. So, I'm making it as soon as but as accurate as I possibly can. The description is full of information. Get your next egg, go in the Apothecon, repeat the process, go to the map again, walk around in a different area. So, if you walked around, for example, in DE, then you might want to try walking around in Shang or maybe try walking around in the spawn or something like that. Basically, go around the map, walk around, try and get these radar pings so that you can get your runes, and once you have all four, good news, you are ready to go teleport. To do this, you're going to need to go over to the sigil, that's the purple symbol that I mentioned earlier, in the Kino projector room and have your entire team stand on it. Once they are on it, your entire team will teleport to the boss fight area and you'll be able to start your boss fight. Now, before you go, I highly recommend you listen to what I'm about to say very carefully, okay? The way I do this, that I find the most easy, is I number the different runes of creation in my inventory, as you can see here, one, two, three, and four, reading left to right, okay? And that means that when we're doing this next step, every time I need to call out which rune is which, I can just say one or three, and people know exactly what I mean. If you say electricity, there's a chance someone's going to get confused because the one on the right does kind of look a bit electric as well, and I just feel like one, two, three, four cannot be misunderstood. 
It just can't be. So, what I recommend you do is get everyone in your team on the same page. One, two, three, four are the four runes of creation. And then when you go into the boss fight area, if you run forwards, there's a book. It's the Cronorium. Hold square on it, and what it's going to do is it's going to start flicking through pages and give you an order. So, for example, it might show you an order of symbols such as two, three, one, four. And what I mean by that, it's going to show you four of the Apothecon words, the runes of creation, and you need to basically get in your head what the order is. So if it shows you the leftmost one first, then that's going to be one is first. If it then shows you the rightmost one in your inventory, then that's going to be four, so it'd be one, four. And then it's going to show you maybe the second one in your inventory, the second from the left. And so you're going to say, okay, one, four, two, three. Lovely. I've got the order. As soon as you know the order, go back to the area where you spawned into the boss fight, and up there you will see a purple rune flicking through different possibilities. What you're going to do is wait for your first rune that you had in the book to show up. So, for example, if our order was 2314 that we saw in the book, then we are going to wait for the number 2 rune to show in the air there, and then go and hold square on it. If you hold square on it correctly, it should pop up in yellow in front of you, a big yellow rune glowing in front of you, so that's how you know you have successfully activated it. Then wait for your second rune to pop in, so if our order again is 2314, then we're going to wait for the third rune from the left in the inventory to appear in front of us in purple, hold square on it when it does, and it'll then come up in yellow in front of you, and you're going to do this for all four of the runes, okay, so 2314, get them all done, and once those four things have come in, you'll have a load of stuff start spawning, and the boss fight for real begins. You'll have different waves here, because you've got a load of Marguars that you've got to kill, and the Marguars are elemental in this map, so for example, you've got the fire one, where the floor becomes very lavery and there are walls of fire everywhere that you've got to avoid. That one's reasonable, in my opinion, but don't be worried, by the way, to jump through the fire if it means that you're going to be avoiding a magua, because those margs are going to do a lot more damage than that fire is. Also, very helpful at this point to have either a magua hat or one of the Templar hats, or the God hat. Those three are really, really useful for this. So, fire stage isn't too bad. The void stage is going to have electricity sort of buzzing its way around the room, and you just got to avoid it. But once again, that electricity is not going to do as much damage as a Marg Slam, so just be very careful and don't worry too much about the electricity. Then you'll have the... I guess, light one, which is when the walls start slamming down and stuff, and that means you've just got to basically be very wary of where the walls are going to be going to. You can kind of see them running along the floor and things like that. And also, be very careful here, if you get on a perch on any kind of ledge, there's a chance the game will just kill you off. It does that sometimes, so try not to perch on any ledges you shouldn't be on, just run around and you should be okay, kill all the mogs in each of these stages, and once you kill all the mogs, you'll get to a new area, kill all the mogs, get to a new area. If things aren't moving on for you, then maybe just go hold square on the Cronorium on the book, because there's a chance that'll sort of help the game prompt you forwards with it, but you should be able to just kill the mogs, maybe hold square on the book, and then go through those different stages, and once you have done all of them, what will happen is the summoning key in the center of the room will fall down, and you should be able to pick it up. As soon as you pick it up, you're going to be teleported back to the real world, you'll be back in Kino, and you'll have a summoning key. At this point, there's a good chance you'll be in a new round, so be very careful, try not to end the round as best you can, because you need to throw this key into several locations. The first location that we're going to be doing is going to be in Mob of the Dead. Come to Mob. There is a poster in one of the cells across the little gap here, so you're going to want to throw the summoning key at the poster, and if you hit the poster, you should see a big glow happen, and you can rest easy that you have successfully got it, and you can move on to the next item. Now, this step is super buggy, okay? What I recommend you do is just be very, very careful with going down with the key, reviving people with the key, all those sorts of things can glitch it extremely easily. And if it glitches, what's likely to happen is Samantha's going to start laughing and take all your weapons away. So be very, very careful when you're doing this step. If you want to, just to give yourself some peace of mind, what I think might be a good idea is 
If you have two guns and then you're thinking about getting the key, just buy Mule Kick. And don't buy yourself a third weapon, just have two guns but still have Mule Kick and then you can pick up the key and there's no way the game is going to glitch and think that you have too many guns and start taking your guns away, okay? So you should avoid the Samantha glitch if you do that. But anyway, I digress. We've got the Mob of the Dead poster. We're then going to be going to Origins and in Origins there is a tombstone which we're going to be throwing the key at once again. You should see that big white glow. Once you get it, you should have completed the tombstone. Then you can come to Shangri-La. In Shang, there is a crystal which we used for the Shangri-La Easter egg so many years ago. Throw the key at the crystal and you should get once again another white glow. So that's three down, okay? The next one is going to be in Kino de Toten. On the chandelier, there is a metal box. Come over to it, and for this one, I recommend you angle yourself such that you are throwing it towards the front of the metal box, so almost in front of the metal box, and you should get it after a few attempts. This one can be a little difficult, but throw it at the metal box and you should be okay. So that's Kino. In DE, we will be throwing it at the clock, so come to the front of DE, throw it at the clock that is up there, which we shot for the Viking helmet, and you should once again get another one. Then come to Verukt, and in Verukt, you're going to want to throw it at the MG42, which is above the fountain, so chuck it at the gun itself, you should see a white glow. And then in Nachron Toten, come downstairs, look through the rebuildable barrier here, and you'll see a red barrel, throw it at the barrel, and you'll get, once again, a white glow. Once you have them all done, you should no longer have the summoning key. And that's a good thing, because that means you are now ready to go back to the Kino teleporter, and you should see that it's all buzzing and lit up again, and that means you can go in there as a team, and you will be teleported to the final boss. Now, this final boss isn't really that bad, in my opinion. Personally, I don't think it's really that horrible, but there's always a chance that Treyarch are going to patch it and make it worse and things like that, so I'm going to be as clear as I possibly can here. I really recommend somebody has the Thunder Gun. I also recommend you upgrade your Arnies during your game, because Arnies are very, very useful. What you're going to be doing in this fight is going over to one of the green beast fountains that are in the corners of the area, there's four of them, and holding square. You'll drop the summoning key in there, and then it will start collecting souls. Once you've got enough souls, it will stop collecting souls, as soul boxes always do in zombies, and you'll be ready to grab the key again, and then throw it into the Ghost Sophia that is floating towards the center of the room. If you hit Ghost Sophia, Ghost Sophia will fire a laser beam at the Shadow Man, and then the Shadow Man is going to become available for you to shoot, okay? He's going to judder back and forth above the sort of end of the room here, and you need to basically continuously shoot him. Now, during this, if you've got teammates, they should be chucking some Arnies out for you, maybe using the Apothecon Servant to protect you from any zombies. If there are Margs, they're going to go after the Arnies, so that's going to be great, but make sure you are safe while you're doing it, and also make sure that you have one person near the the book, the Cronorium, so that when the Shadow Man has been pushed back as far as he possibly can be, and by that I mean when you've shot him a bunch of times, he'll judder back and forth, left, right, left, right, and you have got to keep shooting him, he'll go back and back and back, then once he's really far back, hold square on the book, make sure you've shot him enough times, so keep shooting him if you need to, but have someone hold square on the book, and if you do it correctly, you will end your boss fight. The Shadow Man will be defeated, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. The cutscene will play. Once again, I've got that on my channel, so in the top right-hand corner of the screen, if you want to watch the full cutscene, go ahead and do it right now. But thank you so much for watching my guide. If you've made it this far, congrats. You've just done the Revelations Easter egg. If it's been useful, leave a like, please. That would be fantastic. And consider subscribing as well, because you'll just get more useful guides like this in the future. I've been Mr. Ruffle Waffles. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. And one last reminder, more tips are in the description. Thanks guys, catch you later.